Jimmy Peterson has never seen the Missouri River. He lives 400 miles from its banks. Yet, what happens to the river happens to Jimmy Peterson, for he is a future citizen of one of the 10 states which make up the Missouri River Basin. The Missouri is the longest river in the United States. There's over 2,400 miles of it, draining a half billion square miles, an area about as big as continental Europe. That belt, 600 miles wide, stretches from Cut Bank, Montana, to St. Louis, where the Missouri joins the Mississippi as it flows toward New Orleans and the Gulf. Few economic assets are more valuable than a well-behaved river. But in the past, the Missouri was as often a liability as an asset. It changed channels and rearranged real estate at will. It carried so much topsoil downstream that pioneers said, well, it's too thick to drink and too thin to plow. For years on end, the river might shrink to one third of its maximum flow. And then one year, 30 or 40 million acre feet of water would pour down river adding another tally to the billions of dollars floods have cost farms, homes, municipalities, and industry. Today, such destructive floods are a thing of the past. The Missouri has been tamed by the greatest system of man-made reservoirs in the world. General Harry G. Woodbury, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, tells how the Missouri was tamed. We began to make the Missouri a servant of the basin rather than its master back in the 1930s with the construction of Fort Peck Dam in Montana. In 1944, the United States Congress authorized the now famous Pick Sloan Plan, and full development of the river's resources began. First, there is Garrison Dam above Bismarck, North Dakota, and then Oahe near Pierce, South Dakota, Big Bend, Fort Randall, and finally, Gavin's Point near Yankton. More than 100 smaller dams are authorized on the tributaries. Some of these are complete. Others have not yet been started. The main stem dams can store a total of more than 76 million acre feet of water. More than three years, the total annual average flow of the river at Sioux City. The Missouri Basin Program is multi-purpose in nature. Taken all together, its various features benefit everyone. The dam's main stem and tributary, the water storage, the bank stabilization structures and navigation channel yield tremendous dividends in flood control, water transportation, irrigation, electric power, and recreation. It's a truly balanced program. Actually, in its Missouri Basin legislation, Congress created a new concept. Previously, river development had been undertaken only for navigation and flood control. Now, for the first time, a river was to be developed to its fullest potential, not for one or two purposes, but for the benefit of all the residents of the Missouri Basin. No use of the river was to interfere, according to the act, with the beneficial consumptive use of upstream waters for domestic, municipal, stock water, irrigation, mining, or industrial purposes. But fortunately, the potential of the Missouri is so great that there is no real long-term conflict among any of its authorized uses. The needs of navigation, for instance, influence power production by less than 1% even before the river development program is finished. It is paying handsome dividends to all who live within its 10-state basin. Later on, we will see the tremendous implications of the river development for the future of Jimmy Peterson and all our boys and girls. But even now, except for a few tributary valleys, scenes like this are part of a dim, hardly remembered past. Great levees and flood walls keep the river in its place protecting our farms and crops and our towns and cities. Its flood-free banks, as we shall see, are inviting new industries. The river is no longer a menace to be feared. Now its broad and peaceful reaches are a common treasure of all the inhabitants of the Great River Basin. Nearly a half million acres of farmland are irrigated, and the project calls for much more irrigation 
to permit diversification of upriver agriculture. Perhaps the most personal results of the river development program, to a great number of people, are the new recreational opportunities which have been brought into being. Main stem dams have created a water surface of more than a million acres with some 6,000 miles of shoreline. The landlocked and water sports have become possible and popular in areas previously deprived of these growing national pastimes. Picnic grounds, campsites, beaches are open to the public without charge, not only at the great dams, but also at many downstream tributary reservoirs and on the lower river itself. But important and indispensable as all these benefits are, they may well be eclipsed in sheer economic value to the people of the basin by another river development benefit, navigation. It's a very great pleasure for me to be here today uh, at uh, Wayne City Landing, where the boats from the only transportation we had in those days, the Missouri River, landed and where all the great trails started, right here. They'd get off the boats here, go up to Independence, have themselves equipped, and then go west to Gardner, Kansas. One trail went southwest to Santa Fe. The 33rd president, a native of the Missouri River Basin, Harry S. Truman, reminisces about the river in his grandfather's day, and then continues. I was raised out here in southern Jackson County, about 17 miles southwest of Independence. They say it's 10, but it's 17. At any rate, I've measured it time and again, so I know. And uh, I am very much interested in what you're trying to do. Thank you. I, th I think it's a wonderful thing for you to revive the transportation system of the country. You know, this river, the Mississippi River, the Ohio River, were the only lines of transportation to the west in the days I've been talking to you about. Now we've got railroads, road transportation, and now we're bringing them all back, and it's going to take all of them to make this country great. It's going to take all of them to make this country great. Presidents Truman and Eisenhower supported the Missouri Basin Development Program in its original construction stages. And Presidents Kennedy and Johnson have continued that support because it is vital to our section of the country and to the nation. Each method of transportation has its own special advantages. But there are many areas where various means of transportation can, do, and should compete. Mr. Fred Seaton, newspaper publisher of Hastings, Nebraska, for eight years Secretary of the Interior under President Dwight Eisenhower. Now it seems to me that President Eisenhower put it very well when he said, if we are to continue to advance agriculturally and industrially, we must make the best use of every drop of water which falls upon our soil. Toward that end, the Missouri Basin Project serves a highly important purpose. It will help build up our whole region, and it will help add to its diversification and to its prosperity. No matter where he lives in the Missouri Basin, every resident of the region will eventually benefit from that now and in the potentially enriched future which lies before us. <laughs>